So in this video, we will be doing some basic one light portraits and also see if this $330 portrait lens is good enough. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography, then this channel is for you. So you might want to consider subscribing and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see more of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. And if you guys want to learn more, I do one-on-one -on -one online workshops. And if you are interested, the details are in the description below. Okay, so welcome to my small home studio. If you guys are new to the channel, this is basically just about two meters wide and 3.5 meters deep. And as I said in my intro, I will be doing some very simple one light portraits today. And I will be doing that with the help of this one. This is my Nanlite Parabolic 120 Octabox, but my light is my Nanlite Forza 300B. Now this light is actually a very viable replacement to a studio light and the nice thing about this why I like it is because I can actually power it via V-mount and bring it outdoor on location and it is bicolor. In other words, if I want to use it in an environmental portrait with a lot of existing ambient light that may be in the warmer tone or tungsten, I can automatically adjust or easily adjust the color temperature of this light. So for today, this is the light that we will be using. Now, you could also see here, I have a five foot by seven foot hand painted backdrop from Kate Backdrop. Beautiful, beautiful backdrop. One of my favorite backdrop man manufacturers, relatively affordable. I think this is about $200. It just gives fantastic depth and texture to all your, all your portraits, okay? Now, the camera that I will be using is actually my Sony A7R Mark IV, but this time the lens that I will be using is the Viltrox 56mm 1.4 lens. Now this particular lens is actually built for an APS-C sensor, so when I slapped it on my full frame A7R Mark IV, it will crop it and give me an effective focal length of about 84mm, which will be good for portrait, okay? So let me set this one up. I will have my light somewhere here, all right, and about this high, give or take, because I will want to light the short side of my subject's face. Now, what do I mean about the short side? If you really want to know more about that, I actually made a video already discussing that, and I'll put a link in the description below. And since I'm shooting with an 85, I might have to shoot a little bit further, okay? So with that out of the way, it's time for me to call in my wife, Coco, who will be my model for today. Come on in, babe. Hi, babe. Hi, babe. And as usual, you look fantastic. Thank you very much to our friend, Mela Jimenez, for virtually assisting Coco put on her makeup for today, okay? So, you can see here now, I actually put my light here. This is lighting Coco's short side. Lighting the short side of the face will actually mean that you're putting more shadow here, which is the one facing the camera, technically making her slimmer. All right, so I have here now the NAND light. It's on full power. This is 300 watts. I set my color temperature to 5600 Kelvin. I also turned off all my video lights. So all the light that's coming from Coco now is coming from this NAND light. These things are not powerful enough to actually affect the image, okay? All right, so what are my settings? At first, of course, I will set my white balance to 5600 Kelvin because that is the color temperature of that light. And I am on manual mode and the shutter speed is one over 500. My aperture is 1.4 and my ISO is 100. Why am I shooting in 1.4? Because I want to blur out the background because the skate backdrops, the hand painted ones, once you blur them out, they look even better. All right, so one over 500, I am actually about two thirds underexposed. And let's see how this particular um, uh, lens performs. All right, okay, so I can see IAF is working. All right, babe, here we go, one, two. Can you move slightly to your right there? Too much? Bring it back, okay, very nice. 
I like that. Maybe I'll move the camera a little bit back. All right. Autofocus seems to be okay. But of course, this is a very strong light source. When I did some initial testing, it was all right. Sometimes it would focus hunt, but otherwise it's okay. Now, it's got an aperture ring similar to that of the other Sony lenses that I use, like the G Masters. Unfortunately, the thing that I don't like about this aperture ring is that it doesn't have that clicker thing. So it's not very tactile, so you don't really know um, if you accidentally moved it. So right now it's at 1.4 and the lens in itself is actually built really well considering the price. It feels very metalish, but it's small and light. That's one thing that I like about it. Now image quality, let's see one more babe. Overall, I think it's sharp enough. It's, it's not so bad. Um, the image is not so bad. The sharpness is not so bad. Let's see, let's do a few more. Now, I'm pretty sure you guys might be asking some technical details with regards to this lens. You look fantastic, babe. But I'm, I'm not that type of person to actually give very technical details. I, I go by feel. And to be honest, for the price $330, it might actually be a viable option for a portrait lens. But you have to remember that this is a 56 millimeter lens. Inherently, it is still a 50 millimeter that's just cropped to give you the look of an 85 or the focal length cropping of an 85. It is not a real 85 millimeter lens. Therefore, I am not gonna go in really close and shooting her tight because it will still distort the same way a 50 millimeter would distort. So that's one thing that you have to remember. So if you notice, I am still shooting her as if I am shooting her with a 50 millimeter, which is a half body shot. Okay, all right, babe. Very nice. Color-wise, I think it's very nice too. Oh, beautiful. I love that. Can you take one tiny step to your left and do the same pose? Very nice. Oh, I love that. And don't you just love the fall off of continuous light? Something very different compared to flash. Continuous light. Well, don't quote me on this, but if this is what I would notice. I don't know why, but Continuous light tends to be a bit softer than that of flash, so it's more forgiving. That's why I like, sometimes I do love using continuous light for portrait photography because it's more pleasant for, for an individual. Okay, babe, that was beautiful. One more. Very nice. Love it, I love it, I love it. Okay. Okay. All right, so what are my thoughts about this entire setup? Well, first, I do really love this light, this continuous light from Nanlite, this 300C. The bicolor gives beautiful light, strong enough. If you notice, my settings were ISO 100 f1.4 at 1 over 500 shutter speed. So technically, you could be dancing and I could be shooting you. Oh, your eyelashes. Oh, no. It's okay. It's okay. okay. We'll do, a, yeah, we'll do a few more shots later when we fix her eyelashes. Now, where was I? Oh, the light. The light was beautiful, of course, to match to my beautiful subject. Thank you very much, Bay, for doing this. Background again from Kate Background, beautiful background. Now this one, this is a, well, technically it's not a portrait lens for me personally, because it is still a 56 millimeter, so it's good for half body portrait. But for the price at $330, it is a good starter lens that you could use for uh, just to get really good bokeh. It's sharp enough at 1.4, but I did notice that there was a little bit of fall off um, well, vignette, which I do like for portrait photography, so that's not an issue for me. Softness on the edges, I noticed also were a bit soft, but then you, you can't really expect this one to be sharp all throughout. And if ever you want it sharp, you could just stop down to about 2.8, which is actually going to be okay. But of course, you buy a 1.4 lens because you want to shoot at 1.4. So you want it sharp, wide open. But overall, it's actually a good enough lens for $330. And But if you do have the budget, it's better for you to be able to buy the more expensive lens because they are actually still better. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see more of Coco's images, you could follow her on Instagram. It's Coco Alejandrino. Or you could follow me, Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.